Hello there, I'm Vignesh Shivakumar uh, from Phoenix Financial Training here to share a few tips and focus areas relevant to the December 2018 Advanced Financial Management ACC exam. As you might be aware, the structure of the exam is such that you have three questions to answer. One compulsory question of 50 marks in section A and two compulsory questions in section B of 25 marks each. With effect from the September 2018 exam, uh, a choice that was available in section B has been removed and that is obviously uh, continues to be relevant for the December exam as well. If the September exam is anything to go by, uh, the mix of numbers and wordy elements is expected to be fairly evenly balanced. The September exam had roughly half of the exam containing discursive elements. And this may be something that uh, uh, you will want to focus your attentions on. A lot of the wordy elements that uh, get tested uh, are likely to be discussion of calculations that you have completed or discussions related to scenarios you have in the question. So if you are asked to do a valuation using free cash flow in one part of the question, the second part may ask you for benefits of acquisitions or may go on to ask you whether acquiring this given company is strategically appropriate. Uh, a lot of this is pure application of your understanding of the underlying ideas to the context in, in, in the context of the question information given. So uh, there's probably going to be very little uh, abstract theory in there. A lot, uh, majority or probably all of the answers you will have to produce will be combining your basic understanding with information from the question. In terms of uh, number areas or calculations that are examinable. Naturally with the absence of a choice question it becomes imperative that you have attempted at least a couple of questions on all key areas. Of the key areas I would lay particular emphasis on the topic of adjusted present value which is part of the investment appraisal family if you can call it that. In the September 2018 exam, foreign NPV was tested for a very few marks uh, where information that was given had to be uh, further taken ahead with a few more adjustments to get to the foreign NPV. So while foreign NPV as a full-fledged question still remains a possibility, uh, you must make sure adjusted present value is thoroughly reviewed and studied. Further. Uh, when performing APV calculations, it is essential that you know how you get to the ungeared cost of equity, which is the discount rate used to calculate the base case NPV. And for this, there are alternative methods available. You could use the capital asset pricing model, the Modiglani Miller formula. You need to be prepared to work with such formulas and you must also be prepared to uh, gear, de-gear, betas given in the question, not just in the context of APV but also in the context of uh, two or more companies combining or two companies demerging when you may have to dissect the beta or combine the betas to arrive at uh, a risk coefficient beta that reflects the business and financial risk of the company post the reorganization if you can call it that. Besides this, uh, it is easy to tag along a question on calculation of WAC with valuation of a company, more so focused on it might be a demerger, it, it might be a merger. The examiner could pose questions such as the value created through an acquisition or a merger or the gain to a particular shareholder, be it the target or the acquiring company. Such questions are likely and, and doing the past three or four years exam questions from valuations would more than suffice because that will expose you to the areas of free cash flow valuation, P-E ratio based valuation, dividend valuation model 
and so on, which are obviously the key methods. In so far as risk management is concerned, foreign exchange risk was tested as a part of the 50 marker in September 2018. While uh, risk management uh, questions tend to broadly be based on either interest or foreign exchange risk, given that forex risk has been tested very recently, while one still needs to be prepared on the basics of forex risk, one must ensure you are completely thorough with uh, interest rate risk management. You should know how to hedge using futures, options, and more so the use of collars. Alongside this, knowing how to hedge using swaps and be able to calculate the payment and the receipt amount under a swap is also going to be uh, useful as a skill in the exam. Finally, uh, you must also be prepared to work with scenarios where there are financial changes happening. It may be increase in debt or buyback of shares or any such structural change in the capital structure or the business of the company after which, as I have mentioned earlier, you may be asked to recalculate the VAC or recalculate the value, but you may also be asked to recalculate the expected earnings or the statement of financial position may you may be asked to reproduce after the so-called reorganization or reconstruction. So uh, as long as you are well prepared on these areas, you will be able to do the number bits well and often as I have mentioned, the wordy elements tend to be related to these number elements and, and when you prepare these number questions from past exams, Coincidentally, you will also get to see some wordy elements that have been tested and uh, revise those areas as well. Critical to passing the exam is managing your time very diligently. Uh, it, it will be very, very useful for you to try at least one past exam as a mock exam before you go into the real exam to experience the time pressure and to ensure you make any amendments to your approach that may be essential in terms of order of question and uh, moving on with certain parts of the question when you are finding it difficult into other areas to ensure you complete as much of the exam as possible. Finally, if the September 2018 exam is anything to go by, it is quite possible that since there are only three questions uh, and, the, and the examining team wish to still test all core areas, you may not necessarily be asked to do traditional full-fledged calculations in many places. Say for example, as I mentioned in the September 2018 exam, uh, the foreign cash flows were already given in the foreign NPV, only a few adjustments were required to be made. Similarly, uh, instead of uh, asking for a full-fledged free cash flow valuation, it is quite possible that you may be given the free cash flows and just asked to discount and get to the present value by estimating back. This is just an illustration, it does not mean this is exactly what you should expect, but be prepared to start calculations midway and take them through because then uh, it, it becomes possible for the examining team to test a wide variety of areas on smaller number questions while at the same time uh, putting, putting in enough uh, discussion elements as well. So good luck for your exam, keep practicing, keep the spirits high and it should go really, really well. Thank you and good luck.